I'm delighted to say I'm now joined by Suzanne Chisty, CEO of Fintech Circle. Welcome to you, Suzanne. Thank you for coming in. This year's program is called Fintech for Good. Why is this goodness so important? The fintech and financial sectors have a huge responsibility towards society overall. So we have to move from doing no harm to doing good by prioritizing ESG focus areas. And in order to do that, we have created this film to explore the power of fintech to encourage innovation for a better financial well-being of individuals and also to explain how businesses can embrace fintech innovation to make a real difference in people's lives. And therefore, Fintech for Good, this film, will showcase this current state of play and where we are as an industry and highlight those fintech companies who offer cutting-edge solutions across payments, insurance and also for Web 3.0 and the metaverse. What are the industry opportunities and challenges? Decentralized finance, or DeFi, is a huge opportunity for financial services. By cutting out middlemen, payments can be completed at lower costs. And so decentralized lending and global payments can be completed at almost zero costs in real time every day of the year. We also see decentralized finance having an impact in emerging markets to provide access to finance for people in order to support with financial inclusion. And eventually, decentralized finance will create a digital ecosystem where value and money can be transferred on blockchains using smart contracts, the way today we transfer data and information on the internet. So that's a huge opportunity, but there are also challenges. And of course, the challenges for decentralized finance is that the user experience still has a long way to go, as have got regulatory frameworks. But I have no doubt that within the next five years, all of us will interact with decentralized finance probably every single day. Can you tell me more about embedded finance? Yeah, the embedded finance term refers to the fact that financial services and products can be offered by non-financial companies. So an example would be an e-commerce merchant offering a loan or offering an insurance policy at the checkout, or a coffee shop offering a one-click payment, or a department store you know, offering and issuing a debit card or branded credit card. And the key thing about embedded finance is that it's done outside the going to the bank context. So it means for consumers it's much more convenient because it's part of their journey. And therefore, the size of the industry has, is expected to reach $230 billion in revenues by 2025, which represents a tenfold increase where we were just two years ago. Now, Suzanne, pensions have been in the news a lot recently, haven't they? Uh, can you tell us about the pension time bomb and how fintech fits in with it? The issue we've got currently is that lots of people have no not enough money to save for their retirement. And that's when we refer to the pension time bomb, because the UK census has shown that only 57% of the UK's population actually save in private pensions. So half of the UK are almost sleepwalking into a retirement without adequate preparations. And that's where fintech comes in, because the fintech sector has developed solutions to make saving easier, to make investments easier from a young age to retirement, to allow more people to have a pension and a retirement savings which are sufficient for a dignified life at old age. Big question for you now, Suzanne. What do you think the future looks like? The current financial crisis has got a sweeping impact on UK consumers. This impacts how much money people have at any point in time. and It impacts how SMEs deal with potential defaults. So the priority is to create a financial system that caters to all. 
Even in the UK, we have got 4 million people with no bank accounts. So it's our responsibility as financial sector to protect the vulnerable with more households running deficits. We can be certain of more late payments, mortgage defaults and bad debts. So how financial services responds to these challenges will determine the future of our society. And as CEO of FinTech Circle, I am convinced that the FinTech sector can contribute to society's safety net in this high inflationary environment by making sure that FinTech for good becomes a reality. Suzanne, thank you so much for such a fascinating insight. Thank you. Thank you very much.